Hunter x Hunter episode 24. Back to the Zoldic Mansion. Dentra Chikunier, Jukaini Kakumareta, Hyoko, Sanden Nanahak Niju Nimetor no Shikazan. Why is this so pleasant? Things are not, not so pleasant on Kukuru Mountain. I'm trying to think of an equivalent in real life. Can you just imagine? That、uh, the most popular tourist spot would be like an assassin mountain? What are the values? What is the structure? Where is society going? Yeah, mom showed up. Best family. The X, Zold Dick X family. The music is really cool though. Yeah, this music is more fitting. Not that upbeat, like tourist music from before. Oh, cool flashback. How old was he at this point? How old was he when he started? He's so cute, though. Uh oh, time to get attached to this character after her death. Aww. <laughs> it comes across in such simple ways. Kalua actually seems like a really sweet kid, if not for all the, the environment. That, hey, here's my apple, feels just like, hey, let's be friends. Uh, what does Kalua care about that? Yeah. The way you eat that apple. <laughs> so she's training. Too? I wonder if this isn't like a, a career since this is a high profile assassination family. You could train and move up and work for them. Oh. That's because it got erased from this world. Was it hit by a meteor? Galua's top travel destinations Mafia and Phantom Troop City. Let's be friends. He's so nice, so generous. And Kalua also, he seems like a kid who bonds through like a shared activity. So graceful. There we go. Shared activity. I've been calling him Mike this whole time, but it's Mike. I feel like it would have been cool to see this before the last episode, it would have given it more meaning. I hope she's still alive. Off chance, maybe. Damn, what the heck? I wasn't expecting this fight to be this cool. Clue is aloof, but you know he, he appreciates. That's humiliating. You, what is wrong with you? <laughs> She jumps up the mountain of their corpses. It's like one of those Nerf guns. Quick learner. She's slowly moving around me. This really is double team. Man, I thought very little of this character when she was introduced, but that was pretty great. <laughs> Man, that is dark and I love it. Mike is eating good tonight. <laughs> yep. Alright, just let Mike feed on their. I was gonna say corpses, but they're still alive. Oh, she knew it. I thought she learned it. Wow, that's big of Clue to say. And that means you're better than me. <laughs> Actually, I think this whole interaction and Clue's discovery of her power is testament to the aforementioned <laughs> sweetness because you can tell a lot about someone's nature by how they treat people before and after they realize that person has something they want or understand fully that person's position. So, Kalua was perhaps severely underestimating her abilities, but treated her really kindly. And so far, he's treating her exactly the same, knowing she's more powerful than him or thinking he's more powerful than him. I think what I'm talking about is maybe more apparent when it goes the other way. Like, have you ever had that feeling of someone totally changing how they're interacting with you when they learn a key detail about you? It's 
interesting though because we also know Kalua gets very riled up by people more powerful than him and evaluates the world with power and ability as sort of the barometer of one's worth and is sometimes triggered by that. Seems most likely that that's a function of his fear of his family because you don't get triggered by people who are more skilled than you or better than you at anything unless it's connected to a fear of some kind, either an indicator that you're in danger or you'll never be able to get what you truly want, etc. And with Kalua having run away from his family, he needs to believe he's capable of fighting them off, being able to get what he wants in life without them. That aside, at his core, the more I watch him, the more I think it really is just that. It really is his family's influence and that his natural disposition is is really sweet and good natured. Whoa. Oh, what a thing to say. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Second time. Oh, this adds so much context to Gon too. But yeah, that's she's dangerous for mom. <laughs> this music is so good. Are they saying Zoldic too? Yeah, she's a danger to mom and mom's a danger to her. Oh, he got rejected, but he doesn't understand why. That was his second attempt and Gon was like, yeah, let's do it. Friends? Please love me, oh, canary. All right, that makes more sense. Loneliness. Mom just there, lurking. Can't decide which evil route it is for mom. Could be the thing where parents are miserable, so they're threatened by their children's happiness. Could be her desire to use Kalua as a tool, seeing him as an asset that she covets. Could also be a fear of him surpassing her, so she wants to keep him broken and therefore controlled, so she can assure she always has dominance. You know what's really horrifying about that is that in some cases, the, the kids start to identify with that, and they believe their parents using them in that capacity is honoring the family. This is another bizarre and unfortunate story to tell, but when I was traveling to a certain country this year, I met a girl there that I, I really liked and we hit it off pretty quickly and started seeing each other. But it was really weird because her mother was very active or very vocal and was trying to participate in the whole dating process, like giving the daughter instructions and demanding to meet me, etc, etc. And that's all fine. That could be chalked up as just concern for one's daughter. But it became apparent to me pretty quickly that it wasn't just concern. It was a strategy on her mother's part to use her daughter as a vehicle for attracting money and benefiting from that financially. And this having dawned on me, my first instinct was one of concern and like problem solving. Like, okay, how do you get out of the situation? How do you free yourself from a situation where your, your mom is essentially, to put it very bluntly, trying to sell you? But the second part to that, which is also horrifying, was the realization that the daughter, that was her plan as well. In her mind or the way she had been conditioned or trained, her highest priority or value was honoring her family and what that looked like for her was participating in the scheme, using herself to get money, to give it to her mother. It's such a tricky situation because they have different circumstances than I do. Also, we're all human and it's it's never all of one thing. Like it's not all financial. We did get along really well. There was a lot of good things happening. She eventually did open up fully about the whole thing and I, I could kind of get a bird's eye view on the situation and see how complicated it was. But ultimately, I felt like there really was nothing I can do. If it was someone I liked that was actually just trapped against their will, and needed help, that would be different, but it was so much more. There was a complicitness in the situation that I'm not blaming her for at all. I, I think it's just upbringing, but nevertheless, she wasn't in a place where she even wanted out. And so there's no way I could participate in that without compromising myself and also helping to facilitate this thing that I, I don't like. For example, anyone who provides that person financial assistance of any kind, it will not go to improving her situation in any way. It will just go directly into her mother's pockets. Coming back to the show, I mean, like all sympathy for that. If that's the world you grow up in, I think it's very hard to extra yourself from it. And I think Kalua's stance, his verbal rejection of his family is testament to his inner strength that he got through all of this and came out as Kalua with any sweetness intact at all. Maybe there's a chance. Yes. Okay. Good news. Oh, hi. I'm scared of that little girl. I'm not scared of him. Too much of a bully. <laughs> no one respects him. Wow, Kluo just has his number, even while chained up. This is leverage for the mom. Whoa. I believe him. That's a credible threat. I can tell Maluki's nothing. You or you scare me. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like you, Kaluto. He's getting tortured by my least favorite child. 
そして今は自分の意思で独房に入っています。You know, I'm a little bit confused about this actually. Why did Kalua return? I mean, he was broken, right? Maybe he was hypnotized. I don't think he came back because he wanted to make amends with his family. I mean, the best I can do right now is that he just didn't know where else to go or what else to do. That reaction, though, father puts her in hysterics. Is that dad? I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Oh, it's grandpa. Watch him be able to just break out anytime, yeah. <laughs> Feel bad I didn't stab you more. Yeah, I think Kalu is protected a little bit in all this from the fact that he's the star. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Everything he says just describes himself. Yeah, the bastion of emotional health. He just makes it so much worse. Like, no one cares what he has to say. He just bores everyone. Sympathy for Mill, though, he's also a victim. A very interesting interaction. Again, not what I expected at all. It's very pleasant, or mostly pleasant. I'm with Lirio. Damn, bold. What about Canary? She's also unconscious. Damn, he looks badass. That's more what I was expecting. This is very interesting. I think the first instinct is to think they're, they're kind of just caricatures, but to give the writing and the world credit, if they're able to reach the heights they've reached, there's gotta be more to them than just bloodthirsty monsters. They have to be interested in the world, they have to be intelligent, they have to be awake. However evil they may be, it won't be that kind of animal blind evil, the unaware evil. Huh. It actually feels like an interested father for a moment. But, but Kalua might be playing into his, into his downfall a little bit. <laughs> I'm nervous. I don't know what to think right now. What is this wholesome moment? <laughs> this is so, like, so different from what I expected. It's like if Ozai gave Zuko his full blessing. Sorry I scarred your face. <laughs> like, what is happening? I want to kill all non-firebenders. You just want to play with your friends. Different strokes for different folks. I'm hoping this is a touching moment, but there's also a chance this is just excellent strategy. I think as a parent, in a situation like this, you often make a mistake squeezing too tightly. If there's any bad blood, your opposition to what the other person is doing is part of the fuel for them to do what they're doing. To take a different tact and openly support drains that energy from the other person. So they're just left with their decision and it might not fully be what they thought they wanted in absence of their defiance. Add to that, sometimes it's about being noticed. You know, it's about making a statement and if you don't get attention for it or there's no statement to be made what's the point point? and then there's also warmth right like we accept you no matter what we love you for who you are that is tempting compared to the coldness of the world outside and the difficulty is this really happening Nah, -uh. Dad said. Wow, so so mom is the real issue, huh? Damn. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's a little bit of a ploy in there, right? That was insane.
Well, that solves the problem of how the hell were Gon Leorio and Kurapika going to take on the Zoldic family, who just seem to be the most powerful of all powerful people. The father, in one scene, immediately just became awesome. Just amazing. Badass appearance aside. The intellectual and emotional range, you know, like obviously being a sinister character, but being so attuned to what's happening and being able to like provide the, the warmth with the, the backing of all that coldness, really something special. In one swoop, he defanged a lot of Kalua's hatred for his family, or at least for the father, who is the obviously the patriarch, the most important person, the one in control. I mean, weirdly, it is a tactic of control to like push when people expect to pull and vice versa. Later on, this is something that can be used as leverage. If Kalua stumbles at all, if the father makes any requests for him to return home and Kalua objects, the father's response will be, haven't I given you everything? Haven't I given you all the chances? Have I ever been harsh with you? Have I ever imprisoned you in chains like your mother did? Have I whipped you like your annoying brother? Did I not take a special interest in you? that I not give you this opportunity. One thing I'm intrigued about is why the why the promise? Why the promise never to betray your friends? That also feels like a double-edged thing. On the surface, it, it looks honorable. Like, okay, if you're gonna do it, do it well and be good. But also in there is the potential for that to set Kalua up for a failure that the father would want. Whether he'll instigate Kalua to do some kind of betrayal or just expects that Kalua will do something that disappoints himself in regards to his friends. Or if there's some magic in the blood, I don't know, something like that. He's playing a higher level of chess than Kalua. Also, like I said, it really does create a nice thing for Kalua to go back to, he thinks. He's the prodigal son. He has this unbelievable empire to return to and possibly lead one day. That's a pretty big carrot. I mean, that looms larger than any stick the mother could inflict on him. So I end up feeling like Kalua leaves with less leverage than when he was in chains. Feels like simultaneously a, a master stroke for the writing and the plot and just a really, really cool way to develop Kalua's father.